Hey guys, uh, Dr. Dobson. We're going to go over a case in this video. Um, here's some trailer footage. It's a 1615 endo and crown prep and then a cantilever bridge. So here's the final result and uh, we'll go over some uh, introductory footage here. This is the case as the patient presented at a new patient exam. You can see the 1-5 actually has a resin cantilever bridge and this is what it looks like the one five um there was debris getting under it so it was heavily decayed necrotic tooth mobile actually had a big lesion and was mobile um, you can't see it on the x-ray because the material is very translucent but there is the can this the cantilevers on it in this x-ray and then there was some recurrent decay uh, under the 1-6 that needed to be replaced. Um, but unfortunately, uh, the patient did not book the appointment until the 1-6 fell out and the tooth developed irreversible pulpitis. So we uh, ended up making a plan to do 1-6 endo, 1-5 endo, uh, and then build ups and preps to deliver a uh, cantilever bridge, uh, which we made in-house. So. Here's some photos of the endo and buildups, and then um, some trial cones. There was our final result there. And then uh, the preps and the cantilever bridges. I made two of them for different shades to get the shade right. So that's the case. Uh, we'll get into the footage from the beginning. Uh, there's the final result. This trailer footage again, I'll skip through and we'll get started. So I'm gonna get the rubber dam on. Would have frozen with uh, one in 200 articane, uh, and then we're going to isolate the quadrant, and I'm going to put another clamp on the five just for uh, better isolation. We're going to have. Also, I forgot to start the recorder uh, while I was doing the accesses, so this is cutting in at the point of uh, isolation when I realized that their camera wasn't on. So we did the accesses, as you can see, and the occlusal reduction of the one six and the one five. The one six was still vital, but like I say, it was um, irreversible pulpitis. And then we'll uh, start instrumenting the teeth. Uh, this is a young patient, 1-6 is vital. We're gonna have wide open canals. So we're just gonna start off with our SX uh, drill and we're gonna get down all five canals. I'll typically uh, search for an MB2 later on in the process. Um, but uh, we're just gonna open up the orifices. The MB1 sometimes I'll, actually we're gonna search for an MB2 right now. I don't think we saw anything, but. So then we'll take uh, our glide path file and clip our apex locator to it and then take it down to length until the apex locator uh, indicates that it's at the end of the tooth. Um, sometimes we'll use our C-prep, sometimes not. Um, more important maybe for calcified cases, um, but uh, we'll get, uh, get the glide path file down, we'll irrigate, and then we'll get our uh, S1, which is a 1504 down all five canals, and then um, and then we'll irrigate and continue on with our file sequence with the apex locator clipped to irrigate for continue instrumenting. And uh, this is a 2504 that we'll uh, take down to length in uh, in our five canals there. And uh, quick endo because of the uh, open canals and yeah, so I'll probably speed through this a little bit here. Lots of uh, footage for this case, so I'm gonna fast forward through a bunch of it. This is the final file, 3504, and then uh, we're gonna try some cones in. I think uh, we may have ended up going long uh, in a couple of canals, especially that palatal there. We're gonna take a trial cone x-ray to see where we're at and it turned out that we were actually significantly long there was two canals in that one five way long on the five in the palatal so we're going to um, remove those and try in some different cones these are f5s and f3s um, and uh, getting closer but we decided that we would just snip our we're gonna snip the paddle on this one here and the, the fives were good for the one five. And uh, so that's what we did. I'm just gonna snip that because I think maybe those are F5s or F6s, but I think that's the biggest cone that we have. So there was, uh, there was the final that looked a little bit better. Actually still out on the mesiobuckle, so we'll snip that one too. Um, yeah, went a little bit long, but uh, 
better uh, better long than short, and uh, we'll irrigate and dry. Use the endo activator, irrigate thoroughly. Uh, still have our. It looks like actually we've already obturated the five. <coughs> so we'll dry dry all of our canals and then put our sealer in. Going to snip the palatal or the mesial buckle and uh, however much we had determined to take us to length palatal and then the mesial buckle. Didn't find an MB2 in this case. Um, recently got a CT that I probably would take a CT of these teeth before uh, doing endo. Um, nowadays this is quite a while ago. But. So we will um, sear off the points and uh, finish um, removing decay and uh, getting our uh, teeth ready for the build up that we'll be using FBF 4 k for. And we'll put, uh, especially in the five, we'll try to get a little bit of build up material into the pulp chamber just for retention. And we're just going to put Toffelmeyer's around uh, the teeth and then fill them up with uh, Acquia Forte uh, build up material. So we'll etch for five seconds, rinse, dry, and then apply our Acquia Forte. And we'll use two capsules of it and then pack it in with a cotton pellet. Leave it for five minutes and then uh, we're going to refreeze before we start prepping because we'll be packing cord or using a um, electrocautery unit, which I think we use the electrocautery for this one. And then, and then we're going to reduce the occlusal surface of the six and the five. And then just do a standard crown prep that I'm just going to fast forward through here. I actually have the scan uh, at the office. I don't think I included it uh, in the video, but um, I can maybe uh, put it on the paper or something. If anybody's curious to see the preps. Okay. Basically, just take our KS1 and, uh, and walk it around the margin. Fast forward here. And uh, water is optional because the teeth are endoed and but and we'll maybe leave the margins a little bit super gingival where we can because there's lots of feral to work with here even for a cantilever bridge not concerned about retention of the bridge I think the interproximal area is going to be the most technical area to isolate because of the deep lesion on the um, distal of the five and the mesial of the six. So once we've uh, isolated our margins down to um, the natural tooth structure, which is going to be deep, then I think we're going to take our electrocautery unit and then uh, begin ablating gum tissue uh, so that our scanner can pick up the margin and we're going to put some articane directly into the site both for hemostasis and for anesthesia and we're actually just going to use the electrocautery tip uh, for um, gingival uh, isolation there's our one six and the one five you can see electrocautery pretty much down to the bone this is probably bone tissue here and uh, it does a good job with hemostasis and you can whack away a whole bunch of gum tissue if you need to and then this is the um, delivery i'll just put it back on uh, normal speed um, yeah so this is the try and appointment would have uh, scanned and then um, designed the bridge milled it in-house uh, with the Roland 52 DWX and uh, sintered, polished, um, made two shades. Uh, this would have been our shade of choice. I think this is just the try in here. And we'll put it in and check the fit, check the bite. There's uh, the pre-insert, there's the units. Uh, in the green state, there they are ready to go into the furnace. And then uh, here they are sintered and polished. So I think this is the probably A2 
like would have probably made an A2 and an A3. Okay. Let's check the mesial contact of the um, cantilever pontic. Make sure it's not too tight. Mm -hmm. We'll check the distal contact. You might see this one with a cotton hole. Okay. How does the bite feel when you bite, bite down? It, grind hard. We'll check the bite. Make sure that there isn't a yeah, that's perfect. terribly we high spot. Yes. Now Cooper's like... And then once we're uh, ready to um, insert, uh, we'll rinse and dry the bridge. And then we'll put on some, uh, I think this is IvoClean uh, on the Integlio. Rinse and dry that. Um, pumice the teeth. And then uh, actually as a final step, I'll usually put uh, a little bit of um, uh, isopropyl alcohol on the interior surface of the uh, of the bridge right before applying the uh, resin cement. So we're going to dry them off. I put a little piece of floss in between. I think I just wanted to try this to see if it would work just to clear off the, uh, the cement from in between the, Let's the bridge see. teeth. Let's see you and then bite uh, down we'll have the patient put really heavy bite down on a cotton roll while they cure. Bite down really hard. So we would have tack cured and then we're going to remove the uh, yeah, excess cement from the buckle. And uh, And then do the same thing for the lingual. We'll cure the lingual, remove the excess, and then we'll use some floss. Did take a uh, fish around the floss, see if we can't dislodge any more cement. We took an x ray to uh, see if we um, had any cement, uh, which we did. So there was this little piece of cement that we just went back in and, uh, and fished out. But this is the final result, and uh, we've followed up. Uh, it's working well, patient's happy.